when I was 25 and a half, I started a podcast. The goal? To review some of the newest and the latest movies, along with some other stuff. With the help of my guests, I was able to do this. But there were dark forces tampering with my podcast. And with me. They called it an improvised podcast for some reason. I eventually found help in the form of myself. Yes, the me from a universe where the movies I reviewed got delayed. Apparently, my podcast made it to his universe. I know now that it is my duty, for the good of that universe, nay, the multiverse, to keep recapping and reviewing these movies, to hold listeners over until they could eventually see the movies as they were made in their world. For some reason, they come out differently in my world, but it's kind of entertaining that way. My name is Steven Schinder, and this is Delayed Replay. Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of Delayed Replay, that podcast where we talk about movies that didn't come out in that other universe, but came out in our universe. I'm your host, Stephen Schinder, and joining me once again, you may have heard him on the Reminiscence episode. He has his own YouTube channel where he talks about video games called Oddmark TV. Uh, it is Marco Miranda. How's it going? Hey, what's up? It's good to be back. Yeah, it's it's really like just now I was like reminiscing about that reminiscence episode. Oh, fond memories, right? Like remembering to, <laughs> like what time. Yeah, it was I had to go back into the reminiscent chamber just to experience that all over again. <laughs> yeah, and the movie we're talking about this time is actually something we didn't go in intending to see it was kind of a surprise right yeah like we signed up for an escape room and then we go in there and they're just like congratulations you're able to watch escape room 3d and we're like wait what <laughs> yeah like like basically since escape room 2 didn't make that much money in our universe they had to like find a way to like make the third one like get back its money or whatever and it's just yeah it's like such a gimmick and basically we had to like watch this third movie with like 3d glasses and stuff and there are also like hints within the movie of how we could like solve puzzles around us and it was just like really weird right yeah it was so weird dude like i wasn't like, planning to go watch a movie and we go into this escape room like i'm all right i'm ready and then it's just it starts loudly blaring they had like four tv monitors like one on each wall and i was like what's going on like they really wanted us to watch this movie i mean apart from when like me and andres were stuck that one time um before then i was only in an escape room back in like university of sussex when i was studying abroad and i think it was like only for like five minutes or something because it was like a welcome week thing and from what i understand i think escape rooms are usually longer but i don't think they're normally like an hour and a half like this one was are they i've been to one and i believe the one we went to where it was an hour and even then i went to one and it was like you get you find like one clue but they're just so hidden the, i me and my crew were not smart like we did yeah, not me, beat me the either. escape room <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's not as easy as blues clues you know like yeah they don't always have a blue paw prints like lying around <laughs> wait though that sounds like a dope idea <laughs> <laughs> like a child childlike escape room oh my god yeah, and it's, it's just modeled after, like, the house from Blue's Clues. Uh-huh, you know, but like, they, look, yeah. <laughs> they, like, make minor adjustments so they don't get sued, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, instead of a notebook with, like, the red chair on it, they have to, like, make it, like, orange or something. I, I don't uh -oh. know. Like, <laughs> um, Falling around Azul the Kitten. <laughs> Azul the Kitten. <laughs> You know, Blue was actually originally supposed to be a cat. Uh, like, it was going to be a cat called Mr. Blue. Uh, it was, like, in this little documentary thing that I watched recently. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's kind of weird to think about. So we go in this escape room, and like you say, there are, like, 
four screens and there are also like these recliners which like we didn't realize at first had like built-in puzzles in them but we'll, we'll like get to those um in a bit yes and so we're, we're gonna be like switching between describing what's in the movie and how that affected our experience in the actual room mm -hmm. um so bear with us listeners <laughs> but what'd you think of how this movie began like picking up from where the second one left off and pretty much like continuing the journey that started all the way with the first one i was hoping they wouldn't bring back the two characters from escape room two zoe and ben because it's just like they've already been through two of them you guys like yeah. can you can you not <laughs> but yeah escape room 3d it's just like Zoe and Ben are back and it's just like oh no like how how are these people gonna get through this like, I was like so so on like two and one like I was like all right but um I guess that's why they're luring people into these escape rooms to watch the movie because I think most people were like me who are just like eh this whatever <laughs> but um it starts off and they're in the um ugh, where were they again uh yeah, they, they were like in the Canadian wilderness. It yeah. Was like, it was like such a detour, but they had to get to Manhattan. Like, uh -huh. the, they've known that since like the be the end of the first movie, but because the plane crashed in Canada, it was like really a side trek in the second movie. Oh, yeah. Like, like Bruce. oh, yeah, I remember now, like where they're in the, the Canadian wilderness and you're like, okay, like what's going on? And then it's just like, I think we're out. And then you just start hearing like growling like noises from these big animals and then it's just like uh i think what like ben walked into uh just a wall that just was out of nowhere and it's just like no we're still in the escape room because it was they're just projecting like wilderness on this wall and it's uh <laughs> yeah and like it turns out that this escape room is basically like inside it's basically what the the moving truck is carrying mm -hmm. like you know like what those moving trucks like from toy story or whatever like that's basically my frame of reference for moving trucks i guess mm -hmm. basically carrying that room and pretty much taking them to the destination they were like trying to get to mm -hmm. anyway which was kind of convenient it kind of felt like they were trying to like rush because like you know, I don't know if they plan if they thought that maybe they could go beyond three movies, but it kind of felt like, okay, we have to get to this point in the third one. Let's just get there. Like, I, I don't know. Did that feel kind of flimsy or rush? Or was oh, it yeah. Or? It totally felt flimsy because it was just like, we get into this Canadian wilderness and then it's just like, they're like, oh, I don't like, we're still in an escape room. And then you just see like the zoom out. And you just see this giant massive truck just on the road and in the the minos corporation like the the head honchos and they're just like we got them boys and it's <laughs> it's like okay come on dude like did you guys write yourself into a corner and you're just like what do we do yeah it's like, it just seemed like some guy was just like i got it they're on a truck <laughs> Yeah, like the truck driver was eating French fries while like driving, and I'm pretty sure that's like really dangerous. But, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, we we should mention that like John Cena, the original survivor of these escape rooms, whom we met in the second movie, and who like had been captive for so long that he forgot his name. He's also with them in mm -hmm. the back of this truck, and he's basically like breaking down and crying and being like who the hell am i type of thing oh yeah what'd you think of his acting there um you know i didn't think john cena had it in him but like the guy was hysterical and i'm just like damn that must have been all those years of wrestling but <laughs> that that dude was just hysterical and crying and it, it just was really interesting within the character because john cena is a huge dude but it seems like since he's the original guy, it's like they keep finding a way to put him back into escape rooms. So this guy is just trying to like make himself tough and like giant and is all hell to be able to to get through any sort of challenge that they put him through. But he's just starting to break down in this movie. Like this guy is going nuts. Yeah. 
And like you mentioned the growling, there are these like big animatronic wolves. Uh huh. What'd you think of how they looked? They looked goofy because <laughs> they were big wolves, but they I I think they tried to go for like a werewolf thing because like yeah. they their their top chest seemed like kind of like more muscular, like um, but their bottom halves looked still like bit wolvish. So like like yeah, skinny, you know, it, like yeah, like the, like ten feet tall. It's like a giant body builder, but with like little legs, and it's just like you see them like kind of crawling around. And I honestly, I kind of just started laughing. And <laughs> I don't know if they like that within the escape room when we. Like I bet if we were in an actual theater watching the movie, people would be like laughing or rolling their eyes at that. Uh huh. Yeah, it was like just us. We were like basically laughing, and it was like just hysterical yeah that they try to give john cena's character a pep talk so that he can help them fight these animatronic wolves and i mean that's basically when you know after he's motivated he basically does what john cena does best you know like hitting things he whips ass i'm he even did the uh the fireman carry and like just threw one of the wolves onto the ground <laughs> and i was just like dude they're 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 just trying to show off john cena it's like we got john cena he's even got his special moves from when he was a wrestler and everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we also like cut back to the truck driver who's who's like all right keep it down back there and uh -huh. he's also like slurping from his soda drink and he like puts the cup in his cup holder and he's like marveling at it and he's like mm, the cup holder is the key and uh -huh. that, that's when you and i realized oh wait these recliners have cup holders in them and basically like unscrewing it like like you remember when that happened like how well went down when we found that clue yeah that was the beginning of like when we realized like we had to escape this room so we started unscrewing them and like we we took one of the cup holders out and there was this little puzzle piece in there and we're like what the hell is this puzzle piece for but there wasn't like a visible like unfinished puzzle that we could see yet in the room but we were like all right this has to go to something yeah and so we, we were really racking our brains trying to figure out what it's supposed to go to and like we had like no choice but to keep watching the movie for more clues mm -hmm. so yeah the the truck eventually gets to like this building where like the minos corporation is basically it's their headquarters and they also have like escape room stuff there as well mm -hmm. And they put our three main characters in there. And we also see like some other actors that I was very surprised to see in this little known movie. Like I get the feeling that most of the budget went to getting these better known actors. Oh yeah. Like Charlie Day just came out of nowhere and, you, and it was just like, whoa, dude, yeah. <laughs> Charlie Day's in this movie? It's from yeah. Always Sunny, dude. It shows a flashback from his perspective of how like he's also someone who's trying to uh, track down the Minos Corporation, and we see like a flashback of when he's like trying to connect the dots with red string on uh -huh. a wall. It's basically like an homage to that "It's Always Sunny" meme. Mm -hmm. Well, like I'm not I'm not really a fan of that show, but that meme is hilarious and just oh universal. yeah, <laughs> it's so universal now when they're trying to like find out everything about this corporation. So. We meet Charlie Day. That's when we cut back to our own escape room. And it was just like um, a, a little like toy, like little NES was on this little TV in one of the sides of the room. And that's when it just suddenly turned on. And guess what was on there? Super Mario. Yeah. And we're like, that's <laughs> right. That man is Luigi. They want us to play some Super Mario Bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's really weird because this is a Sony movie, so like to uh -huh. get Nintendo's like cooperation for this like actual escape room is like really bizarre. It's like they they must be really desperate because you know Sony like by this point they know that they make more bank if they work with other people like Marvel Studios and now Nintendo. So mm -hmm. it's 
it just makes sense i guess i think i think they saw how much it was working with spider-man that they're like we need a little bit of those nintendo bucks (laughs) so that's when we had to beat the first uh level of super mario but i mean it wasn't too bad like we were both like pretty adequate at games i would say so we got Uh, through that part no problem yeah for for me like I, i was really full of anxiety because it was really throwing me off how in this version of that super mario bros game charlie day was voiced by um or actually it's the other way around luigi was voiced by charlie day like basically previewing like you know charlie day and chris pratt are voicing these characters in that upcoming animated movie for whatever reason it's Uh uh-huh I don't know if this is like beta testing to see if those voices work for audiences, but uh, I mean, what what did you think of how their voices sounded? They sounded real weird. Like I've I've been playing Mario since I was a kid, so hearing Charlie Day and Chris Pratt, and like you could tell that they were kind of making their voices a little more hokey to like to fit the characters to make it, make them sound a little goofy. But I'm gonna be honest, it was just weird and like not working for me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm on the same page. Like, because of how off the voices sounded, I'm not necessarily super hyped for that movie. I mean, let's be honest, it'll probably be better than the 1993 live action Super Mario Bros. movie. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I actually have seen that movie. (laughs) Yeah, it's basically like so bad, it's good. Like, it's fun to watch with a group of people, but it's like, this isn't a very good adaptation. Oh, yeah. It it reminds me, their voices remind me of, like, I don't know if you ever saw the really old Super Mario cartoon, where instead of Mario sounding super happy, like, he sounded like an actual Italian, like, hey, what's going on over here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think I may have seen little snippets of that, but never, like, a full episode. Um, I I think there might have also been, like, some, I don't know if it's that same show, but there's, like, some mario show where it would cut between like the animated stuff and like live action on set type of stuff that was that was the show (laughs) but hey maybe that was very influential on later stuff like the wacky adventures of ronald mcdonald i don't know oh maybe that could have been it (laughs) yeah i I don't know if you've seen that but in the 90s and early 2000s very oh like the, yeah great to video um wacky adventures of ronald mcdonald episodes where it would begin in live action and ronald has like this puppet dog thing and then they go down the slide and the rest of the episode is 2d animated the the funny thing is that i don't remember the cartoon as well but i remember them plastering those characters on like the mcdonald's play areas like very well like the cartoon versions of Ronald and like uh, the chicken nugget, the purple chicken nugget and oh, Grimace Grimace and the Hamburglar and all yeah. that. No, nothing can kill the Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> that actually segues nicely into like this next part of the movie where they have to like go down these slides um, into this next room. Like what you think of this slide sequence? It was kind of fun. It was really weird because they really emphasize the 3d on this part because they're just sliding down and sliding down and then once they get to the end and they get like thrown off the slide into the next room you just see these like weird like kind of like cgi bodies because i'm pretty sure they didn't want to like mess with the the actors but they just come at you at your face and we're like (laughs) so you have you see big old john cena like coming at your face and you're like holy oh whoa dude (laughs) Yeah, and they land in this giant ball pit. So, like, once they land in those, like, you got those, like, you know, those classic um, McDonald's McPlay Place, like, plastic balls, like, flying out of the screen, like, in mm-hmm. 3D. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy, but, like, this this room was crazy. Those balls, because those balls had a secret going on, and it was, like this animatronic shark in the ball pit. I think they were trying to play with like everyone's fear as a kid from like just sharks being in the worst places. I don't know why, but I think sharks (laughs) in a ball pit is like kind of like a universal kid, like, holy crap. What if that's a thing? And they actually made it into this movie. You you know, I never 
had that fear as a kid, <laughs> but like, I kind of wonder if maybe they were trying to capitalize or, or maybe make an homage to a Jaws 3D. You, you know, the way that the shark comes at the screen, like its teeth look really fake. Like it's, it look, <laughs> only looks slightly better than how it looks in Jaws 3D. It's really ridiculous. Oh yeah, it was the the teeth were so hokey, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we could consider this a jumping the shark moment if the second movie hadn't already jumped the shark. Pretty mm -hmm. much, but they literally put the shark in the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, it you got John Cena fighting an animatronic shark. That's kind of hard to say. So like, it, it's basically just popcorn entertainment uh, except mm -hmm. we didn't have popcorn like at that moment so it was kind of eh. <laughs> oh yeah i i mean they should have accommodated with the popcorn if you're gonna make us watch a movie you can give us a popcorn dude <laughs> And then um, I, I thought it was really cool that action sequence when like John Cena grabs the shark by the the animatronic shark by the jaws and just like rips it like open and just destroys the face. And I was like, hell yeah, John Cena. <laughs> and, and I was like, da, 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 da. oh, yeah, <laughs> it's John Cena, John Cena. <laughs> Did you ever see that animated Scooby-Doo movie he was in? I have not. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've only seen the clips where he, he, like, shows up, and it's just, like, so ridiculous. Like, even includes the theme song. During this moment, like, when we see, like, the, you know, through our 3D glasses, we see the mechanical shark parts. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we also notice that, like, there there's a panel next to one of the screens that opens and throws out, like, something metal like, while the shark thing was going on and that that kind of helped us figure out like where that puzzle piece from the cup holder goes right yeah it was definitely the little metal piece the metal piece was like when you picked it up uh it had like this little pattern on it and then we looked around in the room and there was like a little section of like this um wall like right w under one of the tvs that had like a little like it looked like it was the corner of that little pattern so when we like placed it up on there i think the the wall was magnetized because the metal piece just flew out of your hand and just like stuck onto the wall and then the there was like this little like slot thing that opened up from underneath that pattern and the puzzle came out and we're like oh crap <laughs> yeah <laughs> And so completing that puzzle, it was like, oh, okay, I guess this will move us to the next thing. But like, uh -huh. well, once we completed it, there was like this text uh, that came up on like the wall that said, continue watching the movie for more clues. And it, we were like, wait, really? Like, mm -hmm. this isn't a very well designed escape room challenge. No. And <laughs> like, we talked about how they put so much money into getting these actors, like bigger name actors for this movie. It seems like a lot of money went into this marketing stunt because like yeah. <laughs> the, these were like these these escape rooms were crazy because we found out like other people were in like other escape rooms like around the country. They put a bunch of them around and it's just like you're making these parts so elaborate. You sh You should just put the money into, you know making the movie better making the set design better and stuff yeah it, it really feels like they were like panicking over like the financial <laughs> stuff uh, of like the second movie's box office receipts and just like rushing this third movie out and doing all this marketing for like because they really wanted to feed into like the halloween season hype and so like like you know like do all these escape rooms and then like have the movie out for like a limited time it's it was like bonkers like it was mm -hmm. weird yeah you know i think uh executives at t movie companies will just do anything to fill a quota you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the movie continues like, like mm -hmm. once the shark is defeated uh they get out of the ball pit and go into the next room uh -huh. and that's when they see like someone else who's been like 
trying to go through these escape rooms because apparently there are like these other test subjects who each come in at a different starting point but will like intersect with other people if they survive long enough mm -hmm. um and so this is when we get zoe saldana mm -hmm. and john krasinski was with her yeah, like they're, I couldn't really tell if they had a history together or if they had just been surviving the same obstacles here for a while. Like, mm -hmm. what would you make of their back and forth and what that may have implied? Um, I think that they had uh, been surviving together because it seemed like they didn't seem like they just met. It was like, they were, they like even when we came in like they were kind of having like a an argument uh so when we came in they were there was kind of already tension so it was like oh, okay something must have just happened before they um we met up with them like when we see uh Zoe the movie not Zoe Saldana but uh Taylor Russell's character um come in with Ben and John Cena and Charlie Day so yeah. <laughs> There were moments here and there that kind of took me out of it. I mean, watching this in an escape room already takes me out of it, but mm -hmm. uh, there were moments where, like, they know they're being watched because there are cameras in all of these rooms, and, you know, John Krasinski looks at one of the cameras, and it very much looks like one of those shots from The Office where you <laughs> look at the camera, like, wh when Michael Scott says something cringeworthy or something, you know? Uh-huh. So yeah, that that's just a little thing that kind of took me out of it. It was probably intentional, but it just didn't work for me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, so they meet up with them, and then all of a sudden the lights turn off, and um, then just like a dim light just comes up out of nowhere, and they're like, "What the hell's going on?" And then uh, the walls start pushing in. Kind of like like Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or kind of like the. Like the restaurant tables scene in the second movie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just start pushing in, and it was just like, they're doing this again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, it's always, a, I guess that's always like a tense, like, escape. I, I, I guess that's the escape room trope in movies where it's just like, pushing the walls let's see how they get out <laughs> yeah I, I feel like they've probably done something like this in all three of these movies mm -hmm. but w what's interesting about this trope is that i never saw it fulfilled like actually crush someone to death before mm -hmm. seeing uh saw five like th there that happens to a character in that movie and it was like whoa yeah i guess i really haven't seen that happen to like the characters before in oh yeah the, oh the saw movies were so gross dude <laughs> <laughs> oh are you not much of a fan or i've seen all of them and then uh i like the first one um and the second one's kind of cool too but you know the longer they went on the more gory they got and it was just yeah, kind of yeah they they do rely more on the gore as it keeps going like I, the first one is my favorite because it doesn't rely so much on the gore and the traps it's it's a simple story but still a psychological thriller mm -hmm. i do enjoy the series like each installment to varying extents and it's pretty much what got me into like r-rated horror movies back in the day it's like just the the, the attention to detail with some of the continuity was pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like these escape room movies are basically like the Saw movies, but without all the blood, I guess you could say. They they definitely didn't want to do the um, super over-the-top gore factor like they did in Saw, which, I mean, I appreciate. Like, Yeah, I mean, it reaches a wider audience, I guess. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so they're trying to figure out a way to get out of this room before mm -hmm. they get like crushed and like you know john cena being the strong guy that he is is able to like hold back the walls a bit uh -huh. um but like zoe saldana uh feels around and presses like uh because this room has like tiles like on the walls and floors and whatever and like she finds a tile and pushes it and mm -hmm. it like opens up this like 
air vent and so they basically uh try squeezing into that to like get out of this uh what how what'd you think of how that played out i i think that was definitely the most tense part of the movie but um they find the air vent and they're able to like rush through into there mm -hmm. and so i gotta say i'm glad no one died on that part because that would have been gross <laughs> but um yeah uh it was very tense because they really played it up like they didn't immediately find it and it was like there's a bunch of like trash on the ground uh and it's like you have to like feel through all the stuff and um what's interesting was they had like uh a bunch of things on the ground from uh like old newsletters and old like photos uh showing like things about like these characters past and like some of the stuff they've gone through like uh like how they survived near-death experiences and like how how you find out like john krasinski was like a criminal at one point and it, you could tell they were trying to like really mess with the characters so i really like that aspect because some of them were getting like all mixed up but once they were just like no we have to get through and they got through the vents so it, it was at least they had a little um they had a little uh character growth in it yeah, because I'm so used to John Krasinski being, I guess, a wholesome character for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, so that implication that he was he has this criminal past, I thought was really, like, it was a sharp turn. You know, the, the, these articles say that he was a hitman and, you know, takes on these contracts to, like, take out people that certain, like, crime bosses want gone and like just all this shady stuff mm -hmm. um and how like zoe saldana uh, apparently robbed banks and like did like jewelry heists and mm -hmm. has like successfully evaded like people um and it's like whoa like th this makes the world feel a bit more layered for these characters like. yeah and it was interesting with the 3d too because like you get to see them kind of like throwing stuff from like the ground like behind them like trying to like find something and they're just all this like trash and like the newsletters and like photos coming out our faces with the 3d yeah and like the important bits of the text would like fly out to us like the, uh -huh. the highlighted bits and like and, the, and I think it was in, like, Times New Roman or something. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was very creative of them, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. like th this movie is kind of whack, but, like, I thought that was, like, a really cool moment. Yeah, that's right. And then it was funny, too, because that led into our escape room, where since they were about to get crushed, there there is this, um, this little, like, kitchen area. And, like, what happened was, like, there was this little fridge and it just like we couldn't open it when we first got in and then it just flew open and there was like pizza dough in there um that's been like sitting in there and so they had to like we had to take it out and we had to basically like flatten it and when we flattened it we found like a little key in there yeah well, imagine if we had like eaten the dough and like uh -huh. that, that wouldn't have been good for like the, co the company who like put this whole thing together <laughs> Well, they're lucky that we don't eat just raw dough, like pizza dough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I prefer raw cookie dough, personally. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's on there with you, Steven. <laughs> yeah. And and so, like, we get the key, and it's like, oh, what are we supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, we continue, like, watching the movie a bit more to, like, sort of figure it out. Mm -hmm. um and and so like they get out of the air vent and into this next room which looks kind of like a target like you know the target supermarket type of thing. oh yeah yeah i got that feeling too yeah like it had like the same color scheme but not the logo but you you mm -hmm. could look you look at it and it's like yeah that's totally a target oh yeah like, like, I worked there for a couple months a few years ago, so it's like, yeah, I know what a Target looks like. Uh-huh. Like, you could tell, like, they probably just shot at a Target, but they had to just, like, make, like, small rearranges inside the store. It's just like, all right, cover the logos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, the logo that they uh, made visible here instead was, like, a 
blue square with like a rectangle mm -hmm. in the middle is just kind of generic. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I I think it they were trying to reminisce with the little boxes from like the first movie with the the little escape room invitations. Oh, yeah. yeah, so they really like their squares in this movie series. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so so they have to figure out like which aisle is the right one, and mm -hmm. so they they have like a f like a crumpled up um, newspaper or whatever it was they got, and so they try looking through it and see like they find this highlighted number, and it's like the number seven, and so they go to aisle seven, and mm -hmm. that's basically where. The the shelves have the shelves have like marshmallows on one side and basil on the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were going for with this. I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, <laughs> I don't understand what the 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 correlation between basil and marshmallows are. But <laughs> like, <laughs> they were going around, uh, and like they're just like shifting through the aisles, like. The, the little counters to see and it was just all filled with like marshmallows and like basil like the the um the shakers that have like crushed up basil in it and stuff so and that that's when like in our escape room we noticed that like a compartment in the uh f in the fridge opened and it uh -huh. contained this box and so we used the key to open the box, uh -huh. and within it was a, a little bag of mini marshmallows and a shaker that has basil in it, uh -huh. or basil. Um, it's pronounced differently depending where you are, I guess. Um, <laughs> and so we're like, well, are we supposed to mix these? Like, what's going on here? I, I We had the pizza dough, and we had the marshmallows, and we had the basil, so we were like, I guess let's we put them on the pizza? So we just decided to drizzle a bunch of like mini marshmallows on a pizza, like sprinkle some basil. Um, another compartment opened up too with um, with pesto sauce, like not even marinara sauce or not even pizza sauce, but pesto sauce. So we're like, all right, well, let's put some pesto sauce on this pizza. So we did. And um, there was a little like uh small conventional oven like the the toaster oven so we're like all right we're we're making a pizza so we put it in this little conventional oven and we just like sat and waited there for what was it like 20 minutes while this little weird pizza concoction starts cooking yeah <laughs> and and so that meant that we had to watch the next 20 minutes of the movie while yeah we did. uh-huh so they're in this aisle trying to figure out what the hell they're supposed to do. Um, and that's when Charlie Day is like, we have to look inside all the marshmallows. And he uh -huh. like, tries ripping all the marshmallows apart, seeing if there's like a key or something. Uh -huh. um, and meanwhile, like the others are like looking through like these basil shaker things, seeing uh -huh. if there's like something up with them. Um, uh, I'm gonna be honest. I thought that this little scene kind of dragged on a bit. Oh yeah. Like, like there, there are some times when these games go too fast for me to like understand what the clue is. But this is a moment where it, like really dragged on because it felt like they were trying to pad the runtime. You know. Yeah. It wasn't until like the it like they were like deep into like looking for the um within the marshmallows and the 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 basil. And then it wasn't until like when the rabid raccoons came out, like, and started ch attacking Charlie Day, where it was just like, okay, it's getting a little more interesting. But I was sad. I really like Charlie Day's character, and they just attack him with the raccoons, and he dies. Yeah, like the the raccoons, and you know, they came at us in like three D, and like marshmallows uh -huh. were flying at us in three D, um, but. The raccoons looked really fake to the point where I wasn't sure if they were supposed to be real raccoons or animatronic raccoons mm -hmm. that could like just tear them apart. Like I don't know, it's it was kind of hard to tell because of how the effects in this aren't that great all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not. They're <laughs> those raccoons were like that was like some like 
early 2000 CGI. I was like, yeah. yo. <laughs> it, it was just kept going to show. It's just like, you should have put a lot more money into this movie and not, you know, this expensive escape room we're in. Bought all these marshmallows and like basil and pesto sauce and like got a conventional oven in here for us to cook and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, we basically hear Charlie Day screaming. And uh, I mean, I imagine like, I don't know how many takes he had to do with the screaming, but I, I imagine that doing something like that would probably hurt someone's voice. So, like, mm -hmm. I mean, kudos to him, I guess, for like being a real champ or whatever yeah it was it was tough seeing him but like the other the other group was able to escape like all the rest of the characters yeah because uh they find that the bottom of one of the shakers has another number on it it's a number mm -hmm. four so they go over to aisle four to figure out what they need to do next and that's where it's basically an aisle full of hammers. So yeah, the the yeah the shaker had the number four, and they go to aisle four, and it's full of hammers. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's like I, I don't know. Like this kind of felt a bit lazy, like going from one aisle to just another aisle. Mm -hmm. But what what did you think of this hammer sequence? Um, I don't really know what to think of it because there was it was like you said the first aisle was dragging on and then the hammer part came on and i'm like we're still on the target dude like <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird target where it's just like hammers basil marshmallows it was like all right what's the clue and i i i was just like I was like, I see why you're trapping people into watching this movie in an yeah. <laughs> escape room, dude. Like, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, so they basically just each pick up a, a couple of hammers in case they need them for later. Mm -hmm. um, and they continue wandering through this store-looking uh, room type of thing. It's very mm -hmm. spacious. Um, and they find this glass sliding door that like leads to another room and, and it's locked so like they basically have to like break the glass and so that's what they do and, and like the camera is like uh showing it from like the other side so that the glass is flying at us in 3d yeah like you just see john cena just like wind up and like destroy the glass and like they even like did the whole slow-mo thing too with the hammer yeah so it's just like slow motion glass particles coming at your face yeah john john cena even uh oh yeah let's see thor do that <laughs> yeah yeah it's like whoa do, does john cena not like marvel that much like he's played peacemaker who's basically like a jerk captain america so i don't know maybe it's like to feed into that or something mm -hmm. probably like they got the little dc and marvel thing going on there so since that part dragged on it helped us get through the 20 minutes with the pizza yeah and, the and then uh-huh because it just dinged while we were in there and so when we took out the pizza this gross marshmallow pesto uh basil pizza then this little like animatronic um trash can with like a little animatronic raccoon just pops up like this little angry raccoon and we're like raccoons like eating crappy terrible garbage food let's give it to this little <laughs> raccoon and so we just gave the raccoon the pizza and then it took it and it went back into his thing and then it like popped up the next little piece like right under the little um, trash can, like a little section opened up for the next piece. Yeah, and, and the raccoon had like those uh, googly eye things that you would uh -huh. see in like arts and crafts. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's like not very proportionate with the rest of its like animatronic body. But, but yeah, but yeah, the trash can um, it gave us like another uh, component. It's it, it, and it was like in the shape of a triangle and we're like huh i wonder what this is and mm -hmm. it's like is this supposed to be what i was like is this supposed to represent 
the shape of a pizza slice like what is this thing it, it, yeah i think we we're both stuck on that at one point too but then we remembered like the target uh the fake target wasn't it like a square with a triangle inside it too yeah, yeah we're it like, was a rectangle and a triangle yeah yeah the rectangle and the triangle and we're like wait what if there's like another rectangle in like our our room so we like went searching for this rectangle thing and sure enough um in like one drawer there was like this little box like this little like rectangular shaped box with a little triangle opening in it and we just slid the the little piece into it that basically like lit up a portion of the wall and it showed us a message where it was like pay attention to the disco ball and uh -huh. so uh, i like we didn't see a disco ball in our room so we were like oh, i wonder if that's somewhere in the movie maybe mm -hmm. like maybe we're supposed to keep an eye out for a disco ball that'll have like a message on it or something mm -hmm. so yeah we kept on watching the movie um because like what other choice did we have <laughs> yeah we didn't have much choice <laughs> <laughs> and they go into this room where there's like a lot of rotten vegetables and uh -huh. Like, I, I'm really glad that there wasn't, like, any smell of vision from this. Oh, uh, thank God. It, it looked very disgusting. Uh-huh. It was just this room with, like, a lot of, like, rotten fruit and vegetables. And it looked like the back of, like, a, a restaurant, like, butcher shop type thing. And that's when, um, they're, so they're back here. And that's when this, like, giant, like, butcher monster thing comes out. Uh, and it's just like they had to escape from this like little restaurant area uh, while avoiding the butcher monster butcher monster. Yeah, it's got like a mask made of broccoli and spinach. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> like gross, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so they are using their hammers to fight uh -huh. back while the, this butcher is like using these butcher knives mm -hmm. they're even spouting one-liners like eat your vegetables and it's just like trying to like stab them whatever uh-huh it, it was like i i thought this was just like you know like i don't know if you know the game diablo but there's like the evil uh, like by, butcher uh, blizzard. by blizzard yeah there's yeah, like I've a butcher there's a butcher monster and i was like they're just taking from diablo and they're just making them put like vegetables all over his face and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah well, like, like this butcher uh thing is able to get john krasinski it like cuts away when like it stabs him but mm -hmm. based on like the other characters reactions it's like whoa it got him yeah i was sad i was just like nah like i thought it was gonna be like a redemption arc for him but nope they just take him out of the movie <laughs> Yeah, and he, he has this weird final line where mm -hmm. he's he's like, I guess I'm just bad to the end, and he just like chokes to death and whatnot. It's like mm -hmm. it's like over dramatic and overdone. It's just yeah. They have like the 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 somber music playing, but like I I didn't I wasn't invested. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Like, it, it, it's not like that first A Quiet Place movie where it, I, I felt very emotional watching it. It was just yeah. ridiculous here. They just jumped the shark too hard, and it's just like, it's gone to a place where it's just like, nobody cares that you're, you're gone, dude. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, to its credit, Zoe Saldana's character, like, I don't know how long she's known him, but, uh -huh. like, it kind of fuels her anger a bit so that she's uh -huh. able to like fight this butcher thing uh-huh and it, it kind of feels like a reversal of that um like fridging where like a, a female character is killed off solely to fuel the male character's mm -hmm. um, motivations like it kind of felt like the reverse of that which is kind of refreshing i guess from a certain point of view mm -hmm. uh, yeah i mean in general it was just fun seeing zoe saldana go like really crazy full throttle fighting this guy mm -hmm. um and, and like it basically kind of feels like uh the other characters zoe and ben are kind of taking a back seat during like some of this stuff it's like uh okay <laughs> yeah so just stand there and lo look pretty and handsome or whatever i don't know 
it was like she they noticed that there was like this like little pulley with um and like it goes up stringed up to um one of those like whirring fans on the top but the you could tell that the the knives were like the little fan blades were like actual like sharp blades yeah. so she just like used her hammer and crushed the little pulley and the blaze came down and it just like blended like the like vegetables it just blended the butcher monster and i was like all right cool like this looks this looks dumb but like <laughs> like yeah. we were just laughing like it, it was it was getting to the point where this movie was so bad that it was just getting fun to watch <laughs> yeah and, and they they got away with like the amount of quote unquote blood they could show because like the the red stuff that was like flying at us in 3d was very clearly just cut up tomatoes like yeah tomatoes. like tomato sauce and stuff yeah because it's like fruits and vegetables and stuff. Uh -huh. yeah it's like it was just like super ridiculous but yeah it's it, it basically gets into like kind of so bad but entertaining type of quality it's so we were like basically wondering how what how bad can this get and yeah that's when the like uh blade fans stop and like the blades uh kind of move down a bit so that they form a sphere mm -hmm. and, and that's when the like blade fan thing becomes a disco ball and just like shows the message that like i you and i were like supposed to see finally mm -hmm. yeah it was like um i don't remember it was like something reveals the light and we're like something reveals the light because like the the first word was like kind of scratched out so we're like something reveals a light and so we had to like find out like what was this thing that reveals the light within our uh within our little escape room yeah so we were like looking around and we looked pretty much like every inch of the place but that, that's when you um suggested hey we haven't looked under the recliners like uh -huh. at all and, and that's when we're like oh yeah are these recliners movable and so we try moving them it was kind of hard to like push them but like under the recliners were, uh, were a couple of flashlights yeah and like within these flashlights were these things that looked like batteries but they were made of styrofoam and mm -hmm. like, what the hell are these yeah but we had the flashlight so like we, we this was getting to the point where it was like we we're getting close because i think we were in there for like an hour at that point yeah and, and like there was like a half hour left in this mm -hmm. movie so like uh, i'm still kind of confused about like were we supposed to like figure out how to get out before the movie ended or was it just always like positioned in a way where we had to watch the whole movie in order to like get out of here I, i'm pretty sure they positioned it so no one could discover it before because they want everyone to watch the movie right like we even had to like sit there and like in the credits and stuff too <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so the characters in the movie uh, they're also trying to figure out what the message means for them mm -hmm. uh, so they look around and they find this um glow in the dark slime hand uh type of toy i don't remember i don't know if you remember those yeah i do things from when we were kids it was like these like stretchy uh it's shaped like a little, a little hand yeah it's like oh that's kind of weird um how like you had them in like they would only last for a day because yeah. it would pick up all the dirt and like hair and stuff like uh, that and it would just wouldn't make it sticky anymore yeah, that's <laughs> not very aesthetic no I, I mean that's kind of why i don't like stickers in general because like, uh. I, I just know that like if they're on a surface for long enough they'll like collect stuff under them and if you like try peeling them off it might get torn in half or something and look really ugly and so yeah it leaves that like adhesive on like whatever you stick it on to yeah so, so if, like you have to be really like gentle like pulling off a sticker or you're gonna have that adhesive and you're gonna try to like have to scratch off the adhesive and it's just a pain in the ass to get off yeah it's yeah it, i'm gonna have nightmares now <laughs> oh yeah yeah i don't like stickers very much in case uh -huh. people can't tell <laughs> but yeah they found that like 
they found that <laughs> little glow in the dark hand thing and then you could see like in the room like up like really high up there were like these little buttons but obviously none of them could get it that high up so they had to like try and use the little yeah. hands to like smack the buttons and yeah. get them to open yeah well it was like super high up so like they had to try stacking themselves on top of each other uh -huh. so, so like you know yeah you got john cena on the bottom because he's the heaviest mm -hmm. and, and then you get like the other three like Stab you got coming on each other's back. Thank goodness that a couple more of them didn't die by this point because they might not have been able to like reach it with the hand. With yeah, those four at this moment. Mm -hmm. This is like a huge like like restaurant butcher shop place, and like they finally get to it, the floor just kind of like open up, and then they just fall through it. Yeah, like they press a button with it and fall through the floor. And so uh huh. Yeah, and it's, like, super dark, and it's, like, it, it does this weird thing where, you know how in animated shows, whenever the characters go into a place that has, a like complete darkness, it'll show their eyes floating in the darkness so we know where they are? Mm -hmm. it, it was like that for us, like, it was showing us their eyes, and they were, like, in 3D, and it was just, mm -hmm. like super weird and kind of gross yeah it was just like the eyes and it's just like because some of them were closer to the camera than others like some eyes are like huge like in your face and the other ones are like a couple other ones are like one and two in the back just like you see a pair of eyes and it's just like whoa dude but once the it was dark in it just you see the flack flicker of light and then it just comes on and then they're all inside like this what seems like a hospital like this hospital room. That's when you get uh, John Hamm coming in wearing a lab coat. Mm -hmm. You could tell they're basically not trying anymore with like the dialogue because he's basically like, I am the one in charge of the Minos Corporation. Yeah, and like <laughs> just villainous reveal type of thing. I think they're. I think the the writers and the the filmmakers were just as over it as we were by that point. <laughs> yeah, getting John Hamm in this villain role is like, I mean, I guess it's kind of cool, but I was like kind of checked out by this point. Yeah. And, and so John Cena basically he's rages and is like, "You did this to me," and he mm -hmm. tries running at him, but then like John Hamm gets out this. A remote and presses a button and it like reveals that like John Cena has something in him that electrocutes him. Mm -hmm. so he's still kind of under his control in a way. Yeah, like he just electrocutes him and he's like, you all like you all have this um like a little chip in them that electrifies them. And it's just like uh, he's he's like, you better not do anything crazy now. And it's just like <laughs> when is this gonna end, dude? Yeah, like, I was kind of wondering, like, when did the others get these chips? And he explains they were in the ball pit and they, mm -hmm. like, they were remote controlled and latched onto you and got in your skin. And it's like, this looks, I don't know if the science behind this checks out, honestly. It sounds no, ridiculous. it was so weird. It was like these little, like, because you had the big sharks, dude. And then it had, like, it looked like little plankton critters and it's just crawling yeah. towards them. And it's just like this flashback to the ball pit scene. And then it's just and we like... See them in 3D. <laughs> oh yeah, and you see the little plankton coming at you in 3D. And then like, they had it... Um, I don't remember how um, Zoe Saldana and like uh, John Krasinski, because they came in later. But they showed... I remember they showed the flashback for them, but I was just so checked out that I didn't pay attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, it, it, like, briefly showed them um, going in a room that had broken glass, and they, like, fall on the broken glass, and I guess some of the chips were, like, on the edges of the broken glass, so it got in their bloodstream. <laughs> Super stupid. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was getting hokey, dude. <laughs> it was so goofy, but... So then John Krasinski like walks out of the room and that's when they got to the like the final like escape trap. And so it's just like, okay. Oh wait, you mean like, John Cena? John, I thought, no, 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 no. Sorry, not John Krasinski or John Cena. I meant John Hamm. Oh, <laughs> A lot yeah. of Johns in this yeah, movie. There's so many Johns in this movie and like two Zoes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was getting so confused, dude. But so that's when they were getting to the final trap 
because they they had to find out how to escape this hospital. They like look around and they see this box filled with styrofoam and it has like this um like they're not sure what to make of it but they mm-hmm. like turn off the lights and they see a glow in the dark message on the styrofoam mm-hmm. um and, and that kind of helped us figure out what to do with like the styrofoam batteries that like we we f- or battery shaped styrofoam rather that we found um mm-hmm. so yeah, do you remember how we like handled that? Yeah, because I think um, we turned on like the flashlight because it was opposite for us where when they turned off the lights, they saw the the message. But instead, we decided to turn it on and we flashed it at our styrofoam and it had like this little message and like um, it like because we had a black light uh, flashlights. Yeah. So yeah. when we flashed them on, the message came up. It, it gave us a hint to reveal where the final clue was for us to escape. Credits. We also found like actual batteries to like power those flashlights. They're like between the cushions of the recliner. Like, uh-huh. like you know, like what what kind of happens when you like have a couch and like stuff gets stuck under the cushions and stuff. Uh-huh. So yeah, that was like kind of getting us closer to the end. Um, and for the characters in the movie, the glow in the dark message uh, basically said, uh, "Only the truth will set you free." And like that message sounds very generic, so like I wasn't sure like what to make of it. Um, but they, they find these like blo- these like y- you know those uh, things that people have as like little kids they're like these cubes that have letters on them and you know oh like like the puzzle blocks and stuff like with the a b c yeah 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 and 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 they get the letters that spell out truth and like put them together because like they're Mm -hmm. magnetic and like uh that emits a signal that like opens the door Mm -hmm. yeah it's like a very elaborate for like this final thing i guess yeah and they're like running through the hallways and you can just see like like within the windows like it would pan by and you'd see other people trapped within the um their own uh rooms within the hospital like this is like the big like minnows corporation like the biggest trap where they had like so many people like so many other people who survived like the escape rooms and they're just like rushing through, rushing through, trying to find. Um, they're getting so close, and they're just like, we need to find like the the baddie, like John Hamm's character. And um, so they're just like running through, trying to like look. That's when they get to like the the final room within the hallway in the hospital. And so they go into that one, and their John Hamm is uh, just on his little bicycle like his little peloton (laughs) watching them on his screen as they ran through like and so he knew they were coming (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's like you may have taken down some of those other rich people before but you you'll never take me down Uh um and, and so uh john cena is like is that a challenge and john ham is like he makes it look like he's thinking about it for a moment. It's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and that's when John Hamm like presses a button that opens another door. And, and from that door comes in like this henchman that he has, but it's not just any henchman. It's uh, the, the character is played by none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> And so we get this fight between John Cena and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, um, Zoe, Ben, and um, Zoe Saldana's character are just in the background, like, trying to find out how to help uh, John Cena take on, like, The Rock's character, this giant henchman, while John Hamm is casually just getting off his peloton, like, wiping the sweat from his forehead with his little like workout um small towel next to him you can tell he's just kind of like playing around like gonna find a way to escape but they're trying to find a way to like help john cena and capture john ham before this guy could like do any more escape rooms they figure out that because the place where john cena 
got electrocuted um mm-hmm. like it very much looked like it was like somewhere in his fist so like they tried yelling that to him like reminding him that that's where the thing is and so mm-hmm. john cena basically uh tries like punching um the rock in the jaw just right so that mm. the shocker thing in his fist like goes haywire and basically electrocutes the rock mm-hmm. I thought that was, I thought that was just goofy too, because it was just like, it got to the point, like he punches the rock and they even do the, like, with the cheeks and he just shocks the rock and like, just electrocutes him. Like you just, it goes into like his, like into his brain too. And you just see like the neurons like flashing off. It reminded me of like the, the, um, the brain blast in Jimmy Jimmy Neutron. Neutron. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But it's just like, just electrocuting him from the inside and he just like like falls over and it's just like then they're they had all john ham all to themselves they're basically like trying to like tackle john ham and like get his cell phone because like his cell phone has the like wi-fi signal or whatever and mm-hmm. and so they, they managed to like what's the word overtake him Mm -hmm. they were able to um subdue him yeah subdue him that's a better word they basically call the fbi and like they're able to like get their location and like basically you have like fbi open up and like crashing through the windows and stuff (laughs) Uh like trying to get everyone out of these escape rooms and shutting down the corporation yeah, I don't know. It like felt kind of like cop out ending, but I don't know like what I expected really. The the movie was all over the place, so just ending it, it like that, a literal cop out with like the FBI is coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like the FBI opened up, and it's just like they see um the uh, survivors, and they start going through to each of the rooms and helping out everyone else who was trapped in this like weird little hospital game thing. They were finally able to like beat the escape rooms. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and like John Hamm has this like weird speech where uh-huh. he's like, "You may have survived, but it's only because you cheated." Uh huh. Zoe, uh, the Zoe who's been in all three of these movies, she's like, "Well, I guess we're just good at cheating death." Uh huh. And- <laughs> <laughs> they, there's just like showing her with the cheating death and then it's just like kind of has like those like you know those flashes in the movies where it's just like you know it stops and it just kind of like freeze frame on them yeah (laughs) and that's when it's just like it's just like goes into like one year later and then it's just showing like this little epilogue of like all these people just living their normal lives so zoe was going back and just going to her office job like living a nice chill normal job like normal job and then we see like what happens with like ben and uh john cena's character and zoe saldana just them living a normal life like john cena finally started a family and stuff so it's (laughs) it was so (laughs) it was just so goofy yeah this was like a 12 minute epilogue i think yeah (laughs) the credits came in too and the credits were so long and so we're just stuck we're like what what's the last part like that we need to do to like get out of this escape room what's the last puzzle piece and then once the the um the credits were over they just opened the door and was like all right you're good and we're like wait we didn't finish it (laughs) They, they, yeah, they were like, you finished the movie, you're done. Yeah. And uh, I was like, somehow I don't feel like we won. And yeah, they were just like, the key was like watching the whole movie the entire time. And we're like, then why do we do all this other crap, dude? Yeah, we, we're like, bro, we, we paid escape room prices for this. And like normally seeing a movie like this would be like, maybe seven bucks or if it's matinee or five dollars if it's a five dollar theater maybe 10 bucks on average but like 
for what we paid for that escape room it was like that was dumb yeah we even had to like log in our names in like this little computer system before we went into the room and they're like give us your email too and like i still get advertising emails for like this escape room company and i'm just yeah. like dude i don't want to go back there <laughs> Yeah, well, like we paid like 40 bucks for this and it's like, I, I tried clicking opt out, but I still get emails from them. It's yep. like super weird. <laughs> it's it's the weirdest, dude. It's like, I'm I'm just like, dude, opt out, like, come on. And they're, they're just doing so much. Like, are you sure? Like, is yeah. like that? And they're just making you go through all these like little hoops and it's just like, dude, come on. Like, yeah, it's like an <laughs> escape room we can't escape from. <laughs> uh-huh. It's the worst type of escape room. <laughs> then, then it's just Damn. like you try to like opt out, and it's like like when you're when they're like, "Are you sure?" and you're just like, "Yes, I'm sure." And it's just like then it just like it has this little picture of like an escape room, and it's just like if you want to opt out, then find the, the and you're just like, "Stop!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to like complete a puzzle on the screen. Uh -huh. It's like, bro, how the hell am I supposed to solve this? Yeah. <laughs> Just like all numbers and colors and stuff. It's like, I don't know what it wants me to look for. Uh huh. That was an experience, I guess. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, I kind of feel like we need to do like separate ratings, like rate the movie itself and rate the escape room experience. So, uh huh. What are your scores for those out of 10? So, I'm going to give the movie three marshmallows out of 10. <laughs> At least it got to the point where it was just so hokey that they're like, all right, we're going to like hokey it up. Like we're going to get, we're going to make this the cheesiest movie. Like so cheesy, so corny. Like they knew at some point it was like, we jumped the shark long ago. Let's just get stupid with it. So at least they knew it could be at least a so bad it's good movie. Uh, the escape room, I'm probably going to give a 1 out of 10 because, like, those emails are just so annoying that <laughs> it, I, nothing, a 1, 1 email out of 10 times, like, 10 times 10 of the amount of emails they send me because, like, I just can't stand it. And, like, the fact that watching the whole movie was the whole puzzle, like, that's so anticlimactic. And I'm like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the movie was very, like you said, very hokey to the point where it was so laughable that it was somewhat enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it 6.5 out of 10 animatronic sharks. Mm -hmm. like, like, I think it's slightly better than the second one, but not as good as the first one. Mm -hmm. But the escape room itself, uh, I, I was going to give it like two out of 10 toaster ovens, but it reminded me of the whole email thing, just bogs it down more for me. So yeah, I'm in agreement. It's one of <laughs> toaster ovens. Dude, <laughs> um, just like aggressive marketing, it never works. Yeah, and needless to say, all the people who've like gone through this marketing stunt aren't happy with the experience. So that's probably the end of this franchise, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't see this one getting any more movies unless they find a, a new creative way to trick people into watching a escape room for like what are your thoughts on how well it wraps up the trilogy, I guess, you know, I guess it wraps it up at least somewhat decently well because we find out who the big haunt like the big uh, the the mastermind, the mastermind of this movie or this this series. Yeah. Uh, and they capture him. Like you said, it was a literal cop out with the FBI, but <laughs> um, at least it wraps it up pretty nicely. We got a little epilogue for our characters that survived. And um, yeah, I, I don't know how they would decide to do an escape room for unless they just decide to reboot it and maybe try a more serious approach the next time. What, you mean like a Saw movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Maybe, but yeah, I'm pretty much done with this franchise. Like, it's I, I'm like so over it mm -hmm. at the moment because of the aggressive marketing. But yeah, I guess that'll do it. Thanks for joining me again, Marco. Where can people find all the stuff that you're involved with? They can find me on my YouTube channel, Oddmark TV. Uh, I'm about to release a new video, hopefully tomorrow, so... 
there'll be a new video for you to watch where I make funny game reviews and I just make funny gaming videos in general. And then you can also hear my work on the Just Two Lads podcast where I'm their video editor and I like to get into little arguments with uh, Andres. <laughs> and since he records first and I fix it up later, I always make sure that Andres looks like the jerk. Yeah, you always <laughs> so, get the last word. <laughs> I do always get the last word, so it's really fun. So yeah, those are the two main ones. And yeah, you could find me on there. Nice. And I'll include links to those in the show notes uh, like usual. Awesome. Yeah. And as for my plugs, people can follow me at Steven Schinder on Instagram and Twitter, Steven Schinder Storytelling on Facebook. You can find my fantasy horror comedy novel, Lemons on Like Rain, on Amazon, and go to stevenschinder.com for more info on that. Um, yeah, I'm r really just trying to get back in the habit of like finishing the next book and refining it for, so that's final product finally. But yeah, um, info on that will be out when it's out. And people can email this podcast at delayedreplaypodcast at gmail.com send us your thoughts on movies as long as you're not the companies that send us those spam emails from this escape room and you can also listen to me and my dad on the podcast yes shift where we talk about the band yes and its members and whatnot so yeah you can find that on anchor.fm slash yes shift and find all the platforms we're on um, and yeah, they'll pretty much do it. And next episode after this one will be Halloween ends, but without further delay, have a good day. Later.